everyone, and welcome to the InBiz LV podcast, the podcast for business people, entrepreneurs, and anyone who cares about business. I'm Mark Fierro of Fierro Communications. There are a few guarantees in life, but one thing I can guarantee, there's not a single newspaper on earth that doesn't have a headline regarding the coronavirus. As of Friday, March 6th, there are 100,000 cases globally and more than 250 here in the United States with 15 deaths in America. Our guest today, Dr. Laura Addis Fierro, a doctor of internal medicine in Las Vegas and my wife, here to talk about the virus, what we know, what we suspect about the virus. Thanks so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So, you know, the one thing is there's there's a tremendous amount of of misinformation. I think some good-natured people are trying to kind of tamp down the idea of how deadly this is. But this is, some people have said, oh, it's like the flu. It's not like the flu. It's far more deadly than the flu. Right now, it looks like it's between 10 and 15 times more deadly than the flu that normally circulates in America. That's, there's some, yeah, that actually is true. And what really is the concern, though, is what populations are we talking about when we use these statistics? True, true. You know, there's the elderly population where I'm sure the numbers are much higher, people that have immune immunosuppression, people that might be going undergoing chemotherapy that really have immunosuppression, people that are taking some medications like biologicals for psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis, that lowers your immune system. Transplants. They're more suppressive, absolutely, transplants. And then people that have heart disease, people that have COPD, people with asthma, diabetics. These are people with compromised immune systems that really have to be a little bit more on alert. Unfortunately, the one case that we've seen here in Clark County, which just was recorded, reported yesterday, was a 50-year-old person. So that kind of goes against what we're talking about. But statistically, from what we've seen, it has been the older population, very old, very young, and people with comorbidities. One thing that they're saying is uh, the one thing that you want to be very, very careful with is not getting the regular flu so Absolutely. that you don't end up with because yeah. the one doesn't preclude you from getting the other. Absolutely. And I've been telling people it's still not too late to get a flu vaccine. Usually this time of year when people are asking me, I'm saying, no, 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 <laughs> it's the season's behind us. But at this point, if you get a flu vaccine now, you will develop immunity, full immunity from the flu in two weeks. So if it becomes more prevalent here in Clark County in two weeks, people that have gotten the immunizations, even just now, will have that extra protection from the flu virus, which is a bad combination with this new coronavirus. Also, people need to be up to date on their pneumonia vaccines. If you're qualified for a pneumonia vaccine, ask your healthcare provider if you are. People over 65 years old should have the pneumonia vaccine. There are actually a series of two vaccines that we recommend. The first is a pneumococcal vaccine that protects you against the 23 most common types of pneumonia. That's recommended to be the first vaccine. You could also use a Prevnar 13 Prevnar 13 is recommended as the second vaccine after a year's time from getting the first one. And this is for age 65 and older, of course. Now, the Prevnar 13 protects you against 13 of the most common of those 29, of 28 rather, that we get, 23, I'm sorry, I misspoke, that we get vaccinated against on the first one. So you get super extra protection on those 13 and we'll have some good protection on the other 10. That, with the flu vaccine, does give us extra protection. It's anything that compromises your respiratory system can cause you to be susceptible to the coronavirus more so. So that's why we're saying get up to date on vaccines if you haven't. But most people, at least my patients, they've heard it from me too much and they're up to date if they can. And, it, and after all, this disease, the way it takes you in the end stages, is pneumonia. That's what that's it's what takes It's respiratory failure, yeah. respiratory failure. So, you know, when when you get these big scary headlines and everything, uh, what people 
fail to realize is we're not talking about Ebola. We're not talking about SARS, which, you know, kills just about everybody, takes everybody out. That's not what happens here. As a matter of fact, what makes it so lethal in terms of global population is that healthy people don't seem to have any symptoms at all, and they don't realize that they're, they're passing it on to other people. Some don't. And interesting, you mentioned about the SARS virus. Chemically, structurally, it's very similar to the SARS. And the official name that the CDC has been calling it is COVID-19. However, we're also calling it CoSARS-19. I think that's who that's using that terminology. Um, and it be that as it may, you're absolutely right. And I think that's something that we also need to keep following. One of the big issues is, is surgical masks. People are using surgical masks, but it, it cuts two ways. It doesn't protect you from, it doesn't necessarily protect you from incoming virus. It does mm -hmm. protect you, protect others from you giving them, but it does act as a barrier from people touching their mouth and nose, which is the fastest way to get this, right? Yeah, and you know what? It makes people think twice. Like mm -hmm. you say, you, you have a the reminder, mask on. And, you know, even when I'm in the office, I'll sometimes have a mask on when I'm seeing a sick patient. And I'm so used to wearing it now, I just walk out and I'm like, oh, I'm still wearing it. You know, so I think people are using it and getting used to it. But it's not that type of mask that you see everybody wearing the little paper masks. That's not really going to protect you too well. The best type of mask is a P95 mask. Which is available which is, at Home Depot, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Actually, yeah, good luck getting one. Mm -hmm. um, they're probably about 50 bucks a piece if you can find one. Um, but even then, they're supposed to be fitted properly. You know, every time I've started a position in a hospital, they always make you get fitted for one of these masks with, and they're fitted on properly. And there's a special test that you have to take to make sure that it is fitted properly and no particles can escape. So you see these people walking around with the masks. I see some people, they have the mask down on their mouth and their nose is Making exposed. A fa fashion statement. Right? <laughs> it's a statement for sure. <laughs> some kind of statement. Yeah. You know, when you get something this scary and it's moving so quickly and it has the potential to become a pandemic, it is not, it's on the edge of that. It's touched virtually mm -hmm. all corners of the world except for the Antarctic. And it did so very, very, very quickly. When you see that kind of background information and the answer is wash your hands, that, sound, that sounds so dismissive, but it is in fact the single most important preventative, isn't yeah. it? This is the vector. This is one of the biggest vectors. And washing your hands frequently, 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 at least 20 seconds. And they always say that you should sing the song, Happy Birthday to You, Happy Birthday to You, Happy Birthday to Me. If you want to have another one, me. keep washing your hands. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's a good little thing to remind you how long you should be washing your hands, making sure the soap is between your fingers and rinsing well underwater, taking the paper towels. And then when you're leaving the restroom, don't go grab the doorknob and use the paper towels to get use the doorknob, get out. And this is just common sense sanitary practices mm -hmm. for every day used to protect you from getting the regular flu mm -hmm. or any other bug that might be about. However, this is a little different. We don't know a lot about this virus. True. We're talking about common sense things. So they are advising because it is spread by respiratory droplets or close proximity. CDC is recommending six feet apart. We are too close together. We can share this virus if we're one of us is contaminated. So avoid crowds. You know, we like to go to events and we love our Las Vegas Golden Knights and everybody wants to go to the game. And I please hope that we will continue to be able to do that, God willing. I still want to have everybody come here and spend their money here. But we still need to be careful. You don't need to sit on top of somebody and don't shake hands. A lot of people are being clever and doing a little fist bump. Even that, you're still touching somebody. Mm -hmm. Your best bet is to give somebody a little nod Hold your hands to yourself. Remind yourself to hold your hands to yourself. And it's re people will understand this time of year. And there's something else. You know, we are here in Las Vegas. We don't know how this is being transmitted. And there is a possibility that it could be transmitted as a fomite, on a fomite. Meaning, if I have the virus and I sneeze and I put my hand down here and 
walk away. If you put your hand down there and touch the same spot and rub your nose, you can pick up the virus. And we know that from the flu. That's why we use Lysol and all these different, Clorox happens to be one of the better disinfectants right now. But we use all these products to try to disinfect surfaces. One thing no, nobody's talking about in this town of cash and money is maybe money being a vector mm. and maybe being a fomite. And, you know, here we are sitting at a table that looks like a casino table. It is actually a casino table. However, people come from all over the world to Las Vegas to play. And how do you gamble at a table? You give them cash, you buy in. So you got your money. And do you think people cancel their vacations when they want to come to Vegas? They've been planning to come here for a year. Mm. They're not canceling their vacation because they got a little runny nose. No, we're going to Vegas. Yeah, here's my money. So they're spending their money, and now the dealer picks up the money. They're putting it into their little thing. Dealer's dealing. People are touching and touching money. And cash is everywhere in Las Vegas. It's ubiquitous. This is cash is king in this town. Mm. I mean, you think of where we have to use cash, casinos, um, most bars strip clubs, places where people entertain themselves. So maybe we have to start thinking about using other forms of paying for things. It seemed like it would be a good time for businesses to, to make it easier and easier to make electronic payments. There's Very so many easy. ways now. Very um, easy. You know, in, uh, in China, and that's one thing about intentional disinformation campaigns, misinformation campaigns, which China has been engaged in from the very beginning, mm -hmm. and that is because they weren't reporting all of the infections, but they were reporting deaths. It initially looked like a far deadlier illness. It is, in fact, deadly. It yeah. will take a portion of the population out. Yeah. But one of the things that China did is they started isolating their cash. And so if cash mm -hmm. came back from a hospital, the government would take the deposit, give them credit, and burn that money and, re and return new bills. Mm -hmm. Bills that are coming back in large quantities are being isolated, which seems to be the magic number is 14 days. I saw uh, that. They're saying on surfaces it may not last that long, but why take a chance? And we so, don't know. Yeah, so nobody knows at this point. So even when you're dealing with plastic, as you said, you know, you when you have to give up your card and hand it to somebody they're taking that card and you get it back and it does appear that it lasts longer on uh, plastic surfaces than it does on paper surfaces that's not been that, that there's no final word on that but that's what appears to be the case right now i had seen that and it's it's actually counterintuitive yes. to what we think you yep. would but something I soaks saw something that. up versus being on the surface take your card back and put it in your wallet by the edges yeah. um, and then again before you walk into your house uh, wash your hands steering wheels on cars are you come out of public places and grab the steering wheel no matter what you did you still came out of a public place and grab the steering wheel if you work in healthcare, if you work in close proximity to people if you work in close proximity to cash all day Take a shower the moment you walk the door. Take your shoes off. Doesn't your hurt. Shoes, it never it, hurts. Particularly if you've got if you've got a uh, a child in the house that's yeah. crawling around on the floor. They may not get sick, but you know we don't know. We have no. Definitive. We just don't know enough. And it's not. This isn't intention to create hysteria. It's just to be prudent. Yep. And in this day and age, there's no reason to even handle cash for the most part. Mm. There, I go to. I go get my Beyond Burger at Carl's Jr. I'm not plugging them, but I'm just saying mm -hmm. I can pay with my Apple Pay, you know, and there are every store nowadays you can put your card in right there. You don't have to hand it to somebody. So just another way to be prudent. And, you know, I have season tickets to the Smith Center. I think I'm going to sit out this week's performance, just unfortunately, in just in case. Just in case. I, I, I do, uh, you know, not to sugarcoat anything because it's information that empowers us. It yeah. really is. We need it's more in information. Exactly. We have to but wait. In the, in, uh, in the early part uh, last century, um, returning soldiers spread what was called the bird uh, flu, the Spanish flu. And it killed 50 million people globally. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the reasons that it was allowed to spread so quickly is a lack of information. Nobody had any idea until it was too late. 
this doesn't appear to um, be killing in the in the numbers. It's it's not as lethal. Uh, it doesn't appear to be as lethal as Ebola. It doesn't. W w the Chinese and the World Health Organization are both saying that it is not along the order of SARS, which killed far more people in terms of percentage. Yes, smaller numbers, but larger percentage. And fortunately, it seems like it's dying down in China. We're Already. finally now seeing the numbers. I think it was two days ago that was the first day that we didn't see a rise in deaths, and yesterday was the first day that we saw the numbers go down. I mean, that's encouraging that maybe there is a point where it reaches a critical mass and then we're done. Uh, one of the things that's been put out there by officials, and it's unfortunate, and that is that the warm weather is going to take care of this. That's probably not true because where it mm -hmm. originated was not necessarily the coolest place in the world, and that was at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, the the measures that, are be ta that have been taken in America um, you know, we live in such a free society, we can't order people back in houses. They're trying to figure out to do what to do with the ship right now. Yes. But simple isolation for people who aren't in those dangerous, simply stay home. If, you're, if you've got it and you're, say, under, say, your mid-40s, chances are staying home and toughing it out, that's probably you're not going to pass from it unless there are other complications in your life. And as far as staying home... Stay home even if you have the cold. Yeah. Nobody needs your germs, and you're not doing your coworkers any good. Everybody thinks, oh, they need me at work. You know what? You go to work, and you get everybody else sick, and there is going to and be no work. Yeah. So, it, you know, don't. No, everybody thinks they're trying to help everybody else. They're actually doing a huge disservice by going to work. Stay home. If you have a job where you can telecommute, great. More and more pe people are telecommuting. Matter of fact, there's a couple of large conferences that unfortunately canceled that were supposed to come to town. They're doing it via teleconference. And we can probably have a lot more meetings on teleconferences. We don't always have to be physically there with each other, at least for the next few weeks, just till we see how it plays out. We don't know how this if works on Corona, but I will tell you this because uh, it may, you know, as you say, couldn't hurt. Uh, years ago, when I worked in Washington, D.C., the Washington Post did a bit of an experiment. It was part of flu season. In Washington, D.C., all the handrails are brass, so they're perfect for transmitting disease. The stairs are stone, so you're going to grab the handrail, and the handrail carries all these germs every day. So flu season hits Washington, D.C. real hard. Sometimes they have brutal winters, sometimes they don't. Bottom line is Washington Post says, let's do an experiment. Let's have half the newsroom commit to drinking massive amounts of water, and the other half go along with their lives as normal. And the control group got the flu in the exact same proportions that they always did. The group that they experimented with massive amounts of water, when they reported illness, they said, well, I didn't have what they had. It only lasted a day and I was done with it. So there is, rather than you're having your body fight through disease, and I don't know that this works with corona, I do know that it worked with that year's flu, that one of the ways is that instead of your body having to fight it to a standstill, it can simply flush it out before it gets a hold of you. Now, the coronavirus appears to be very, very rapidly moving, right? Yeah. You know, from onset to I'm sick, sick, sick. So very quickly, very it looks quickly. like. Sometimes I'm hearing even 24 hours person goes from having sniffles to having real respiratory failure. So it's, you, you have to be prudent, of course. The one thing I do urge people, and I'm sure you should probably see it too with the people you deal with, is to, when you are sick and you're being with somebody, talk, talking with somebody who actually is not, you're better off just canceling your meeting, going home, calling it another day because we'll have another day. I think all of us are getting a little bit overly concerned. There's a lot of panic. There's a lot of hysteria. However, most people, like you say, are going to go home. They're going to have a flu, like a cold symptoms have. Yes, it's not pleasant to have the flu. I understand yeah. you'll have fever, chills, muscle aches, coughing, sneezing maybe shortness of breath that you might need to have a little inhaler for or something. Unfortunately, there's no antibiotics for it. Mm -mm. So don't go running to your doctor asking for an antibiotic. It doesn't exist. 
but we could try to get some testing done if you've been with somebody who's recently traveled right now we're testing people who have had contact with somebody who's recently traveled in an endemic area or aboard a cruise ship or who had had contact with somebody there I'm sure in the coming weeks it's going to be opened up more to more people but there was some they had some problems with the availability of the test kits initially yes. so because of that we weren't testing as many people and now that we're testing and we have more kits available I think we're starting to find a few more cases mm -hmm. I think we're going to find a lot more cases I think it's been around here for a while that's just my theory but actually it's not just my theory um, Dr. Fossey who's the leading epidemiologist in infectious disease Probably in the United in States the in the world he literally wrote the book on infectious disease and is one of the co-authors in the biggest textbook that we all use for internal medicine very well respected he published an editorial in the in New England Journal of Medicine on February 26th and he had said he thought that their cases have been here in Washington State for some time beforehand and it's just that now we're testing and we're seeing it it's just like when you hear it learn a new word after you learn a new word all of a sudden you start hearing it more in conversation so I think that's what we're going to see here so I don't want people to panic when they start seeing multiple cases being exposed here I think it's been here it's just that we're now discovering it it's probably been in the United States for a couple of weeks and to wrap things up this is the this is the most important thing that I think that if you take a closer look that this is this is the one thing that we do know empirically is that people with robust health weightlifters long distance runners um, who have are confirmed cases where they do in fact get the don't know that they even have been exposed they don't suffer mm -hmm. uh, they don't have that downward slide any more than anybody who gets but they can still carry it and, and transmit they can it transmit it to the 80 year old next to them in a new york second but they are not the ones who are dying so now is a really good time to focus on health mm -hmm. and how to get to robust health and like and you said drink a lot of water too you yeah. know your vitamin body c. needs water vitamin c absolutely it, it, you know is and does d. it does it then be d isn't david and and let, and let's talk about why and that is it does it kill SARS no it doesn't kill SARS but if it improves your health and it has you focused on your health and the and it and uh, it's helping support your immune system then maybe you don't go down that path at all I mm -hmm. think everybody knows about vitamin C and its benefits but why sure. is uh, D playing a role you know actually it's interesting uh, I believe it was it might have been New England Journal of Medicine don't quote me it was about a year ago they had a study published using a very large group there were four groups that they were studying and it was regarding vitamin D in the immune system they were looking at people with bronchitis respiratory infections that were and the four groups were one group was people were people that were not on vitamin D at all mm -hmm. next group was people that never took vitamin D but they started taking it right then for the study the third group is people that were taking it but they stopped it and the last group was people that were taking it and stayed on it all along and what was interesting they found that the group that had the highest success rate in beating respiratory tract infections the bronchitis was about three days faster in clearing the disease was the group that had just started taking mm. vitamin D and it's vitamin D3 that's the active form that helps us in our immune system so it's interesting we have scientific data now showing vitamin D helps our immune systems and it doesn't hurt to take at least a thousand units a day most of us are deficient because we're not out in the sunshine where that's where you get your vitamin D so because of that you probably could take a little supplement I see some people overdosing a little bit on vitamin D though you have to be careful I see people taking mega doses like five and ten thousand units a day and check with your doctor before you take those kind of doses because there is a toxicity problem with that but vitamin D vitamin C B's also B is excellent stress and it's B complex I usually tell people to take drink plenty of fluids and exercise keep your blood pumping keep 
all of the immune globi- all of your s- immune system fighting. It's the best chance we have. And to be clear, we're not talking about curing nope. coronavirus. We're talking about what is Keeping your be- ch- chance for your best shot for fighting it off in the first place than ever, ever getting it in the first place. Absolutely. Uh, we'd love to have you back and talk about this. There's thank you. so much. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us today. Time for us to wrap it up. I want to sincerely thank our special guest, my wife, Dr. <laughs> Laura Addis Fierro, Doctor of Internal Medicine, and we will, in fact, have you back. And for all of you out there who own businesses, have that entrepreneurial spirit in your heart, or care about someone who does, remember to like and share In Biz LV Podcast on Facebook. You can catch us on YouTube, iTunes, or my personal favorite, Stitcher. If you know of an interesting business with a story to tell, you can reach Fiero Communications at 702-385-7300. Make it a great day. See you out there in the deal stream. We are out of here.